on, everyone. Welcome to Base Coverage, uh, presented by Athletes Forum. I'm your host, Jamal Clay. And today we have uh, Ryan Fire, my receiver, Nathaniel Robotai. My bad. I, uh, I botched the name for a little bit. Um, what's going on, big man? How you doing? I'm good, brother. Happy, happy Saturday. Good morning to you. I'm excited to be on this and excited to kind of chop it up with you. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Just a little segment we like to have on here, just, you know, talking ball, everything in regards to like the European League of Football and what's going on. More of a, like a, a reactionary piece. But um, what have you been up to lately, man? What's uh what's been going on? I'm sure you're training and ready for the season. Yeah, the se- I didn't realize the season started at June 5th, um, but obviously preparation for that has been taking place, taking hold. Um, just started really getting onto the field because up in, as you know, being from Maine, up in New England right now, the weather is just all over the place. So it's nice one day and you can get out and, and run. And then the next five days, it's snowing and cold. And then it's yeah. one good day. So kind of kind of iffy with the field work, but obviously in the gym, putting on putting on some size, putting on some weight, because, you know, when you go over to Europe, you don't eat as much. You're not as you're not as gluttonous <laughs> as you are here. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little different in terms of the food laws and stuff like that. But uh, meals, uh, meals are a little far, far in, in between, if anything. But yeah, exactly. Uh, but hey, man, let's get let's get into it. I mean, so last year, European League of Football, the first inaugural season, all right, started with eight teams. Towards the end of the season, they announced that they were going to bring four more teams in, Brian Fryer being one of them. From from your perspective and the outside looking in, right? You know, what what were your thoughts on the first season in terms of you know how it went, um, if it was even going to be as successful as you know other startup leagues? It's obviously clearly something different, but you know, what were your thoughts watching it, uh, watching the first season? Yeah, so I I honestly didn't keep up with it that much being in Finland and playing. Um, I did because you couldn't really watch it because no one bought the bought the package to watch it, so, so, and, and there was no legal streams of it yet. So no, so I, I really didn't get to see much of it. I saw some of the highlights though, um, but just being in in European football and kind of knowing the background of it and a lot of things that go and the inner workings of it, um, I heard about the league early early and often, and um, I was excited for it. I actually was going to end up playing for Barcelona in twenty their first year. But we just kind of didn't didn't uh, kind of come to terms, and uh, that that's kind of where that was. But uh, yeah, I was looking forward to it, but things just didn't work out. So I went up to Finland. Plus, all the COVID stuff that was going on in Central Europe, I just really didn't want to be a part of it. Um, so that's why I didn't take that leap as well. And then um, kind of just watching it from afar, watching the highs from afar. Being blunt and honest, it's it's all the guys that I've already played against in the GFL. And then they, 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 they switched over. It went over there. Um, now I can't, I really don't know how the level of play is going to be. That's why I keep telling everybody now, like I'm excited to be in it. I'm excited to play in it, but I don't know what the level is going to be. I, I kind of understood of it, stood it in the GFL sense from when I was in Frankfurt and then Swabish hall, I kind of understood like, okay, I'm going to go to Swabish hall. I'm going to go back there for the second, third and fourth year. And we're going to have a good team. We're going to win a lot of the games. And I kind of could expect playing Munich and Frankfurt and yeah. Braunschweig. I, I, I expected the the level of play. Um, this I have no clue. <laughs> Just watching <laughs> this, I I have I have no clue. Yeah. I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a bunch of names from all over these different teams pop up, and I'm like, I've never heard of this guy before. Never seen yeah. that guy before. Asking about guys. Um, so I'm excited because I don't know what to expect at all. And then going to Dusseldorf and Ryan Fire, I haven't been, I haven't played in the North except for in the German Bulls. So I have no clue kind of what it's going to be like living in Dusseldorf or how things are going to go. But I'm excited for it. Um, everything's in a new chapter for me. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's crazy. And one of the elements you brought up was that they did this during them essentially, you know, a COVID year with putting this league together, how fast they did it and how the first season went. So, yeah. you know, that's crazy. That's, that's pretty crazy. But you had mentioned it, you know, some of the, some of the other leagues you played in with, you know, the Finland league and the GFL. So, you know, I know you say you didn't catch like a lot of games, but from what you can tell based off, like, you know, the games, the highlights, the social media, you know, what, what make, what makes the league different at least from your perspective, from the GFL and, you know, the Finnish league outside of, you know, some of the competition, you know, that you will play against, even though you don't know how the overall competition will be. What, what do you think will make, what do you think is making the league different from some of the other top leagues in Europe right now? The marketing. Yeah. The, the, the marketing aspect, man, it's the, it's, 
the the 4K cameras, the stuff that they're pushing behind it, the Instagram page. I mean, I kind of go back when I talk about it with everybody. I go back. The GFL had just I'm not a big a big proponent of social media and like posting yeah. pro- promo videos as highlights and all that stuff, but social media aspect of it, the GFL had 30 some thousand followers in six months. The ELF is almost at hundred K. Yeah. The, the marketing aspect from of behind this league is nuts. Insane. Um, yeah. And I think it, it's going to draw a lot of, a lot of good players and a lot of um, European athletes that want to kind of take that next step and, and kind of put themselves in that, atmosphere of where you're going to have good marketing and with good marketing obviously you're going to have a good product you have to have a good product with good marketing and more guys are just going to come into the league i mean you see it this year with all the signings there's a lot of guys that i played against and played with prior in the gfl and and some guys in the film that are going down to that league and and playing in the, in the european guys because it's almost that um, import feeling that that you're a professional amongst amateurs so which which is which is great and i mean the marketing behind it all the photos and stuff like that is cool if you're into that stuff but <laughs> i just i just i'm just i mean i'm i'm excited i'm just ready to get get to that atmosphere in that platform and just kind yeah. of ball out man yeah i hear you and it's uh you know the marketing is one thing but i think the you know the play or the the you know, the, the caliber of guys that are playing in the league, you know, helps too. And it's, and it's what's making it uh, attractive as well. But that's why year two is going to be so interesting because, you know, obviously more teams, bigger markets, you know, and more, you know, high caliber players like, like you joining the league. You know, I think, you know, it helps in terms of, you know, backing that marketing and what they're selling. Now, yeah, for sure. Now, beginning of this year, January 7th, it, you you had officially signed with the, with the fire. Um yeah. And, you know, obviously on paper, it looks like they're building a good team, you know, solid, you know, offensive linemen so far. Um, you're able to take a couple guys from Cologne, but also like, you know, you're able to keep some of the guys who played in the ELF last year and joined the team this year, as in like Omari Williams or, you know, Timothy Canoodle. And then recently you guys should sign, you know, Matt Adams. So, you know, what are your thoughts yep. on, what are your thoughts on the type of team that the organization is putting together right now? I think just on, like I, like you said, the guys that are signing, I mean, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow um, yeah. online where we kind of get to meet the receiving core and those guys and kind of get to hear, hear them and see their reactions and stuff like that. So that's always cool. Um, I mean, on paper, like you said, they're putting together for what looks like a good team. I know that the offensive line has, has been working together. You can see that on a, on the social media pages that they're really coming together, working together. So I think in coach, Law is going to be. I heard he's one of like the best offensive line guys yeah. in uh, in Europe. So I think they will have a good offensive line. Um, they're just they're just putting together small pieces each and every day, which, which I think is going to benefit us. And as far as the team goes, I mean, being being a guy that's kind of sought out as a leader everywhere I kind of went, it's just kind of going in and setting the tone early and like, hey guys, if you guys want to be a championship caliber team, I've been I've been there, I've done that. Yeah this this is the kind of do's and don'ts of, of having a team like that yeah and th- and then you just kind of and then you kind of take that what what i know and what i've learned and you just kind of bring it into what they've done and they've learned and then you kind of just build around that and you and you trim the fat and you cut off all the edges and you just kind of do what works with Dusseldorf front and fire and run with that for the season and see and see how you guys can come together with camaraderie and all that way most definitely have you had the opportunity to speak with matt yet Matt not yet, not yet. I was, I was gonna reach out. I was gonna reach out to him. Um, I mean, I, I can reach out to him right now if I really wanted to. I just haven't. Yet. I, just, I just, I just, I was gonna reach out to him. I just haven't yet. Um, like over here too. I'm just doing a lot of stuff, just personal, personal wise, and kind of oh, yeah. getting that stuff with uh, everything over here. But no, I can't. I heard I may possibly be rooming with him if, uh-huh. if, if the housing situation works that way. If if we have to have a roommate and stuff, they said I'll probably be living with him. So it would be cool and kind of develop a relationship with a quarterback, which is huge. And which is kind of what I harp on ever since I was in college, just kind yeah. of getting that relationship with your quarterback down. So at any moment, you can just be like, ah, oh, snap, coach called this play, but I know I'm where I'm going. <laughs> I'm just chucking it up. <laughs> no, I, I definitely hear that. Now, you know, I'm sure you guys, uh, what are we in March? So season starts mm-hmm. in June. I'm sure camp will be around the corner uh, whenever you guys get out there um schedule came out 
you know, week one, June 5th, I believe, um, June 5th or June 6th. Uh, I got to double check it. But anyway, you guys are having uh, to face the defending champions, Frankfurt Galaxy. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. you have a history playing in GFL, playing for the universe, what they were at the time. You know, and now you're on the, you know, the, the Ryan Fire in the ELF, you know, as a new team coming together um, and essentially in short in a short period of time for the amount of time you guys have leading up to the, uh, the first game. What what do you think is gonna be what do you think is gonna be the biggest challenge week one for you guys? Biggest challenge week week one is just gonna be well. I know I know Coach K very well, and we have a great relationship. And that just being with him when I was my first year in Europe, and they took me and his family at the universe. Their um their their defense is always gonna be stout. Their defense is always gonna be good. They're always gonna Coach K is always gonna have those guys ready. Um. For us, for us, it's just going to be able to weather the storm of kind of uncertainty in that first quarter. You know how every football game goes, especially in the beginning of the season. Everybody's just got done working out. Everybody's looking good. Everyone's looking good. Fit. Everybody's <laughs> everyone's healthy. All, yeah, everyone's healthy. Everyone's all muscled up. So every, everyone after that first quarter, that's when the game settles down. And then yeah. you start to see you start to see real football being played. So it's going to be weathering that storm of that first that first quarter and, and making sure that things don't get, too high, don't get too low if somebody throws a pick or we fumble or they let up a touchdown respond when the game gets down to the nitty-gritty most definitely i think uh the funny thing is is that you know you speak about the first corner and starting fast um but not letting the game get too big you guys are going against a team that you know week one they lost to hamburg you know yeah. and that's kind of a direct reflection of you know kind of what you were just explaining but you know, you fast forward all the way down. They never lose another game. They end up winning the whole thing. So that was pretty, uh, pretty interesting mm -hmm. that you had mentioned that. Um, so what I wanted to do now is go into a one-on-one -on -one segment, just shooting off some quick topics uh, about things that have happened, you know, throughout the league, um, things that's happened this off season, and I just want to get, you know, your opinion on it. And obviously, if you don't know, you don't know. But um, let's see, let's see what we got here. So the first one: What are your thoughts on the league bringing in? Uh, NFL coaching experience, such as obviously you got Tom Sula with you guys. You got um, uh, Gary, Gary, Kubi Gary Kubiak. The dude from Barcelona that just signed. Yeah, dude from Barcelona just signed and Gary Kubiak for Rosla, uh helping them out. What are, you, what are your thoughts on the league bringing in um, that type of experience in the second season, at least for those teams? I think it's good. Yeah. I mean, not good. I'm not good. It's great. It's a, it's a, it's a great thing to have because you're then you're giving the knowledge to the coaches as well as not just the players. Yeah. So, so you're bringing in that knowledge for coaching staffs that have just maybe been in Europe and maybe had their own European way of, of looking at football. Yeah. And now you're bringing now you're bringing in the guys that have coached or like the guy from Barcelona coached near the highest level. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean that that's that's uh kind of you get that for free <laughs> like, <laughs> like, all right cool so uh question number two uh this is a team that you'll face you know two times a year right um this mm -hmm. is a team that put a lot of focus on the defensive side of the ball uh what are your thoughts on the type of players that the Leipzig Kings have, have bought in on the defensive side Oh, they did one with, yeah, with uh, yeah, they like I said, they had uh, they had AJ coming in. I, I know I played against AJ a few times. They got the Mike Tavares coming mm -hmm. in from Barcelona. Um, those are the two big names that I've seen. But like I was saying before, I um, it's new. I don't really know yeah. anybody else that's getting signed, or I've never seen anybody else really play. Um, I've never really seen the guy from Barcelona play either. I just been going off of what these Instagram things are about. But I've seen AJ play, and I know he's going to bring some fire and intensity to that defense. And when he gets going, other guys get get going too around him. So I know they'll be flying around. But like you said, just got to weather that storm in the in the in the beginning and just kind of hunker down and, and ride that wave out to the end. Most definitely. Uh, question number three. Uh, you know what? Let's make this more specific. From at least the guys you know that are going to be playing in the league. You yeah. know, what's one guy you're looking forward to going against? Hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. There's <laughs> a, I don't know. 
I, I can't really pinpoint just this one guy. I know there's, I know obviously it's going to be fun to see AJ again. It's going to, well, I, I love playing against Frankfurt. I I, I yeah. love playing against Frankfurt just because I, those guys were, they're my family. A, a yeah. lot of those guys, a lot of those guys that are still playing on that team I played with in 2016. So you get them week I mean, one too. Yeah. So just, just yeah. seeing all those guys, Gomez and Josh and uh, just, Guys that I've I've been playing against for the past six six seven years, how long I've been doing it, and just yeah. just those guys. Um, definitely excited to see uh the corner we signed Omari in practice. Yeah, Def- definitely excited to see see him go against him every day in practice and and see what he brings to the table. But, yeah, and, yeah. and and what time out real quick? So Omari, right? You know, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, whatever happened happened. I'm not here to get into that, but yeah, top three corner, top twenty five player, lockdown corner. And for the for the reason why, at least in one of my features, I had wrote that it was a steal for the fire for the amount of time that he was available and you guys are still able to sign him. That was a great pickup for you guys. I'm sure you guys will have your battles in camp, but, you know, for a team new to the league, right, you know, bringing in someone who has experience, especially in, on that back end, um, someone that's going to make a lot of guys better, you know, that was definitely a mm-hmm. good, good pickup for you guys. Uh, at least I thought so. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm rocking, I'm rocking with whatever the coach picks <laughs> up. So yeah. if you picked up Omar or if you picked up, so, 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 so that's a good, that's a definitely a good pickup. Yeah, what's up? So people, so people like me and spectators and media covering the league, right? What, what do you think we'll be saying about the Ryan Fire team come September? You guys will be saying that it's no joke, and that that these guys, what they put on paper, came out to play each and every game, and and that's why that's why they're a tough matchup because you just don't know where the ball's going. The, the defense is always flying around making plays, and they just you could you'll just be able to tell that the team has a lot of has a lot of camaraderie, and they that's yeah. they're, they're gonna fight for each other. Well, definitely. And last question, obviously, you know, it's I think it's pretty safe to assume that the league's gonna still try to keep expanding. All right. What what country or two would you like to see the, the league expand to outside of the ones we already have? So obviously we have Germany, Spain, Turkey, Poland. Um, what other countries you want to see get involved or you would like to see get involved in the league? Other countries. I mean, probably France. I, th- I think France, France would be pretty cool. Uh, I mean, I know they talked about it, having a team in France and having maybe another another warm weather team <laughs> like uh, <laughs> Portugal or something. Some, yeah, somewhere, yeah. <laughs> somewhere is warm. <laughs> another warm weather team. I, I hear you so, so, somewhere around there. France, something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it would be interesting if they, you know, they do another big announcement towards the championship game last year. But I think that's a lot of people. A lot of people are looking forward to see what's going to happen with where the league expands to. So, well, yeah. hey, man, I appreciate you coming on, man. Um, you know, it's going to be exciting to see you in the league next year. You know, the league, you know, as it continues to develop and grow uh, in these uh, caliber players like you guys uh, out there on the field. So um, I appreciate you coming on. And, you know, you got any uh, shout outs shout out. you want to give before, before we head out? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I, I appreciate this um, for, for sure. I hope uh, you guys are doing well and I hope you and your family are doing well as, as well, staying yeah. safe during this crazy time in the world. But um, some shout outs. Yeah, definitely. Shout out Ryan Fire. <laughs> that's, that's that's for one. Shout out um, the European League of Football for putting this thing on for everybody. Yep. And, uh, and and shout out God for sure, because without God, none of this is possible. Most definitely. Most definitely. Well, I appreciate you, man. And, you know, good luck. We'll be watching you this season. And and I'm sure this won't be the last time we chop it up. No, nah, definitely not. For sure. Thank you, man. Yeah, Appreciate no problem, it. man.